Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the 24 volt max brushless hammer drill from Cobalt. This is part of their 24 volt max lineup that is sold at Lowe's. So a few specs that we can get off the back of the box and bring this a little closer to the camera here. Uh, 1.475 foot pounds, 4,500 RPMs, and a max speed of 1,400. Comes with an auxiliary handle and an SDS plus chuck. We'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute. So let's see what you get with this tool when you buy it. So this sells for about $170. So just by comparison for the price of this, for about $10 more, you can buy a corded Milwaukee. For about 20 bucks more, you can buy the corded Bosch Bulldog, which is kind of the standard in this market space for about 20 bucks more. It's not cordless, but the only cordless solution that comes close to this is the M12 Milwaukee, which has half the voltage that this one does is also SDS plus rated, but is a rated for a much lower uh, power level. And so for the price, this is kind of a unique spot in the tool industry. Uh, the newer Craftsman brushless made in USA has one that's more of the reciprocating saw style. So when we get this out of the package, we get the tool. There is no battery that comes with it. We get a manual, a belt clip, I find a belt clip to be interesting on this tool here because carrying a tool like this on your belt is a bit of an odd proposition if you ask me. And so here we've got a metal depth bar. We also have an auxiliary handle. And by pressing this little thumb lever right here, I can rotate this off to the side wherever I want it. You can see the little built-in little pieces there to try to help absorb and dampen. Uh, some vibration because a tool like this is going to have some degree of vibration and then we have the a depth gauge here that we can use to uh, set so we don't over drill our holes so if i press down on this little metal this button here on top i can slide this wherever i want to make sure i don't overshoot my hole the other part of overshooting your hole is using a drill bit of the correct length and so this is designed to be used with Generally speaking, a larger battery, probably a four amp hour. You could get away smaller technically, but let's just go with the four amp hour battery. And before we go too far, let's look on the side here on the selector here. We've got a couple options. We've got first on the left here, drill only, hammer drill, rotary hammer, and hammer only. So this can be used with a handful of bits, uh, notably of which are scraper bits that you might use for trying to break out tile that you would use only in hammer function. Hammer drill for drilling in masonry, and then drill for drilling into uh, timber or something else. And so with the selector switch on the side, then we also have back here above the grip is the on, off, and lock, with lock being in the middle for forward and reverse. And then we can take our uh, belt clip and put it here on the left side of the tool, perfect for hanging on the right side of your, of your body. There is no option to reverse this to the other side. And also notably, this is a brushless tool. So if you put this in drill, you can see it screams a fair bit. Let's check out the noise level on this when it is in drill mode, obviously no load, no bit. So back at the rear of the tool, it's coming at about 101 decibels. So it's definitely loud that you might want to consider having some ear protection on if you're going to be using this on a regular basis. There's also venting here around the top. One of the things that would be nice to see in this is that there would be a nice little screen here to help to just keep some of the dust out. However, to be fair, that screen also might hold dust in that would get in here that otherwise the, the internal fan could kick out because since this is a masonry tool, you expect this tool to get a little dirty. And you can see with the four amp hour battery, with the height of that compared to the two amp hour battery, the handle can go straight down, which is nice. Obviously you can use the larger batteries on it. Now let's test this under one more condition. 
to see if this is compatible with the XTR battery. So we know there are some tools that do not work with the ultimate output battery. Most notably is the grinder. And so now we want to check to see if this will work with the ultimate output battery. At least under a no load situation, no problem. So if we look at the front of this tool here, you can see for the collet here, we can push this back to be able to insert our bit. So first, what this is not, this is not rated to be used with a hex shank bit. This is an SDS plus, which is intended specifically for bits that are SDS plus rated. You'll see it very clearly on the packaging. Uh, the main supplier of these is generally Bosch, uh, which complements their Bulldog line. And so then these go in to the collet here. You'll have to spin around to make sure you get it set just right. And when you lock it into place, you can see there's no play in here. There's no, it kind of goes in like an impact driver. It goes in and it sits very solidly and firmly to have positive contact so that when you put it into hammer mode, that this bit is fully seated and integrated into the hammer mechanism to be able to achieve that maximum action that you can get on the hammer drill because the whole reason you want to go with a rotary hammer is this offers you uh, much more torque and power over a hammer drill and you also have a few more interesting bit options just because of that secure positive lock it's also important to know that this is sds plus there's also what's called sds max which is not compatible with this that's going to be bits that are larger than you know, roughly seven eighths of an inch. That's what this is rated for is up to seven eighths of an inch. You know, just for reference, here's an 18 inch long half by half inch masonry drill bit. This is a Bosch one. So you can get some incredibly long drill bits. And a lot of that is due to the positive action of this collar. Whereas if this were a hammer drill, there is no way you'd be wanting to operate bits that are 18 inches long. And this can go up to, and is rated for up to seven eighths of an inch, which in all fairness to Cobalt, it's hard to actually find bits that are more than seven eighths of an inch in SDS plus, because at that point they're usually switching to SDS max. And it's gonna be very important that you get your bit fully seated, that you can't pull your bit out of your chuck here, because that is the whole point of this and you have to be able to retract that collar just like that. And you'll be able to see when you spin this around, that there'll be one point where it'll positively seat. And depending upon where the hammer is relative to the chuck will affect where this is. So if I turn this on, you can see that's in drill. Let me go over to the hammer only mode and then maybe you can see how that differs. So in hammer only mode, you can more clearly see if the drill bit installed, there is no rotation. It's just the front to back action of the hammer. There, I seated that all the way back. And then it's just hammering away at it there. It's not gonna be quite as uh, visible here, but we're gonna go outside and we're gonna see this in action. And you can see how well the Cobalt 24 volt rotary hammer works in action on some landscaping blocks. As you just saw, drilling those four holes in the Belgian pavers, this tool made very quick work of it. Set in hammer mode here, drill down. The biggest complaint that I have is this is definitely loose and wobbly, and there needs to be a better way to be able to lock this down. When I press this in, I can move it, and it's supposed to lock into place, but it doesn't really lock that well. Because I would love to have something a lot more positive and I can sit here and rotate it here to try to get the teeth in there. No matter which side I put towards it, I still have the same problem with this holder here. 
not wanting to lock, at least in my opinion, well enough in place that I feel like I could trust it. I mean, you can see right there it's locked, but this thing is just so wobbly. And the fact that this uh, holder up here is all plastic, because I've got a strong suspicion that if something's gonna break on this tool, it's gonna be right here. And one of the biggest downsides with Cobalt tools is I can't go onto their website and order a replacement part and order just this assembly. I would have to basically warranty the tool. So then, you know, after the five-year warranty is up, I mean, it's great in the short term that get a brand new tool, but after that warranty is up or if I haven't quite broken it yet, then I'm kind of out of luck when this breaks. I don't think it's a matter of if. I think it's definitely a question of when this breaks because something in here, this being plastic on a rotary hammer, that's just not going to last. And I've got to give that as a big knock to this. Let's take out the bit here, remove it from the collet. So if we look here, that I can loosen the handle And if I want, I can take this off. And yes, the band up here on top is metal, if we look at this here. But in my opinion, this assembly here really should be a replacement part. And maybe I'd be able to find a replacement and try to fit, say, a Bosch or a Milwaukee part there, something that would give me a much more solid depth stop, uh, if that would work. The metal band that's on here measures in at nine sixteenths of an inch wide just for reference so if you've got another option here with a nine sixteenths inch wide band that may work as well and so you can see it performed just fine with the ultimate output battery there was no problem that the battery didn't impact performance in a negative way or do anything else weird it acted exactly the way it should and it performed the way i would expect it to so i'm happy with it other than what i described earlier related to this and the auxiliary handle on the depth stop. One more detail for us to take a look at after drilling those four holes, we had a full battery to start with, and afterwards we have used one out of the four bars. So those four holes that were oh, about 13 inches deep, give or take, consumed about 25% of the battery, give or take. And so if that gives you any idea on what that'll do for your job, the number of holes that you could drill. So if that's four holes at We'll just say 12 inches is 25%. So that means it's 25% of the battery is good for four feet of drilling of a half inch bit. And we take that times four, that would be 16 feet of drilling with a half inch bit. Again, with a high output battery, that's four with the four amp hour battery. Obviously you'd get less or reduced results if you went with a two amp hour battery or even the older one and a half amp, amp hour battery or you could step up to the six amp hour battery if that was a concern for you. Another couple of SDS plus options that you may run across, and these are a little bit harder to find, and the quality of these seems to be generally rated as potentially dubious, but I think it's at least interesting to showcase here, are a set of adapters. So the first is the SDS plus to half inch square. And you also have it to three eighths, possibly useful. There's a quarter inch adapter, which to me seems way overkill, that a quarter inch socket should be just fine on a much smaller tool. And another one is a adapter go to quarter inch hex. So if you're only gonna take one drill with you, this would give you some options. So then with the half inch adapter, you could use this, combine it with a lug nut socket, to then go and remove lug nuts or to use remove other high torque fasteners if you don't have an impact wrench. So to test how effective this is gonna be, I've got the tool set in drill mode in reverse. The other modes are all hammer related. I just wanna focus on this trying to back out the fastener. I've got the half inch socket adapter on here with a lug nut socket and my wheel is held on with five lug nuts that are tightened to 80 foot pounds with a torque wrench. I've already tested those with the click torque wrench and they're all set to at 80 foot pounds. So now let's put the tool on and see if this will work for us. So there you go. The answer is no, this does not work very well like this. So if you want to remove lug nuts, 
I'd recommend you buy the impact wrench. That's really better designed for doing this than this, but I thought I'd give it a try with these adapters and clearly no dice for this application. And so in conclusion, I think this is a very ver versatile tool. It is, does a great job at drilling holes in masonry, which is what it's designed to do. But as we saw on the automotive test using the adapters, not so great at the torque when trying to remove a lug nut. You know, maybe some of you are going to say that that's, you know, absolutely the wrong tool for the job. I know I would rather use an impact wrench too, but I'm just trying to show you some of the limitations and the versatility of this tool. Obviously the biggest asset it has in its favor is the fact that it's cordless and you can take this wherever you want without having to pull a cord with you or an extension cord. And it made easy work of drilling through those Belgian blocks. And so with that, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you have questions or comments, put it down below in the comments, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button. If you haven't already done so check back here often for more great content. I'll see you soon and have a great day.